and you can see John turn and start, I assume, yelling <laughs> to his uh, to Jeremy off stage, saying something like, "No, it's I got nothing. I'm dead in the water." Hey everyone, welcome to today's episode. Shout out to everyone on Patreon watching today's episode early. You guys are awesome. So for today's episode, I thought I would go over the first night of Chicago on September 17th uh, with Dead & Company. John's Dumbaland Overdrive special dies on him early on in the show, and it's something that wasn't really talked about a lot, I feel like, or discussed, and it's kind of a cool thing for us to see, so I thought today I'd just go over it, um, show you guys some clips from the shows, and kind of discuss it. So let's get right on into it. Yeah, so that was a good shot of the Dumble there. So that Dumble is a Double Land Overdrive special, uh, serial number 006. We've seen that one with John before on the uh, during the 2019 tour. Um, kind of in December is when we first kind of saw him bring that amplifier out. And it was one of a few different Dumbles that he was road testing during that specific tour. And clearly it's been the main amp for the entire Dead & Company tour for 2021. It's been his number one amplifier. We've really only seen that one brought out and I think it sounds great. I know the Dead & Company tones are really polarizing in terms of a lot of people either absolutely hate them or they love them. I'm here for it. I think it sounds great. Um, 114.23, you hear this kind of crackle, this pop uh, that happens in the audio and this is kind of right leading up to when the amp actually dies, and it's hard to tell if that has anything to do with what happened. John just, literally a couple seconds before that, just kind of finished the solo and hear this crackling in the audio, and then you see him turning down his volume knob and adjusting it for just the singing part where he's not playing any guitar parts. Whether or not that has anything actually to do with the amp going down, I don't know. Could be something it's picking up from the microphones and going to the feed. Or it could just be the crappy section of audio. We don't know, but worth pointing out in my opinion. So right there you can see John starting to strum just some chords and he adjusts his volume knob. He kind of looks down, kind of like a WTF moment. <laughs> and then he turns around to look at the amp. Yeah, and right there you can see him yelling at Jeremy, his new guitar tech. Rene Martinez isn't his guitar tech anymore. He retired during the 2019 World Tour, if you didn't know that. But Jeremy is his new guitar tech, Jeremy Nielsen. And you can see John turn and start, I assume, yelling <laughs> to his uh, to Jeremy off stage, saying something like, no, it's, I got nothing. I'm dead in the water. Good time for a water break <laughs> when you can't play anything. Yeah, so it's hard to tell with the mask on, but that is Jeremy there. And he comes out on stage, and obviously they start to take a look at the Dumble being the primary reason for the breakdown. I mean, it could have been anything to do with the pedal board as well, but they go and they tackle the Dumble as being kind of the, the main reason first, and that is what went down. That's a... Interesting job being a guitar tech for someone like John with something like a Dumble, like, you know, like a $200,000 amplifier, you just grabbing it and whisking it off stage. I'd be scared of dinging it. I'm not gonna just grab my two rock and just be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna haul it away. Yeah, it's not like a cheap amp where you can just grab it and if you're knock it into something on the way, hauling it off stage, you don't really care about it. It's quite the valuable, uh, item and I'm sure it gets road use but still it's not a not something you want to be anything but gentle with and you got to give credit to the band and the top tier musicians that they have with dead and company <laughs> veterans in the music industry something goes wrong with John's amp and everyone just keeps playing and jamming out to the song and 
kind of act like, although something's obviously wrong, they just keep playing and don't just pause the song or make an abrupt playing in anything. They're just like, oh, we're just gonna kind of wait and hold off to see what happens. All right, so here's the kicker out of this whole thing and just shows what a different level that John <laughs> is on. So you see his dumbbell go down and they haul it off stage and you think to yourself, oh my God, his $200,000, however much that exact amp would cost, goes down. What's he gonna use now? That's his, one of his pride and joys of his collection. And then they bring out another dumbbell. You're just seeing almost half a million dollars in amplifiers. <laughs> on the stage in the span of, you know, one night is pretty insane and John's just on another level. Um, so let's see here, yeah. But yeah, so this amplifier is Dumbland Special uh, 009. It's hard to confuse it with 008 that he was playing with Dead & Company way back in like 2017. They look almost identical, but this is a different amplifier and I honestly get them confused quite a bit. So I had to confer with my colleagues to make sure yet that this is actually 009 that we're seeing. Yeah, so you can see Jeremy there, he still looks like he's tweaking the amp and kind of sitting there to make sure John's okay and everything's running smoothly because when they do like their sound checks and everything with the main stage amp, they have everything set up for the song, ready to go, and now he's gonna bring this different amp on stage, and I know what you guys might be thinking, oh, it's another Dumble, another Dumble and it's gonna be similar. Not really, Dumbles are all very different, even like the Steel String Singers, 002 versus 004, they're all very different amplifiers and designed differently, even though they're the same thing, they're not really the same. So this amp is gonna respond a little bit different and have a bit of a different, it's a bit of a different thing, not exactly what John had before. So right there you heard the sound of an amplifier. Um, I think it's his uh, plug going right back in because we should be seeing now the uh, mock sand back on. Yeah, obviously the amplifier wasn't on standby. That had not to be pleasant in his ears because John has those headphones on and he's hearing everything get brought back to his ears and that had to be a little bit harsh <laughs> in his headphones, swapping that. Because if we can hear it like that in his headset, I bet it wasn't, wasn't a great time. Yeah, so right there as the feed ends, they uh, stop playing Mississippi Half Step and John kind of leads everyone into Bertha. Um, I think they just, Maybe he just felt like the song had gone on long enough, let's just move on. So he's back to Saw Brock too, and you get a really nice shot of um, 009 there before the feed kind of ends. All right, so something that I wanted to point out too is that this isn't the first time we've seen 009 on tour with Dead & Company. Actually, this past year, it was on September 7th. We saw 009 at the Kua Hoga Falls show. I had to look up the pronunciation of that and that's kind of a, a local guy on YouTube pronounced where he lived from, so go easy on me on that one. But we actually saw him use that amplifier for that night on September 7th, um, outside of Akron, Ohio, I believe is where that is. And initially I thought that, okay, maybe he's just testing a different amp and seeing how he likes it. But now that we've seen um, 006 go down, it brings into question whether or not that amplifier was having issues and maybe it needed a night off for some maintenance or something like that and that's why he swapped because knowing John and how he kind of road tests different stuff on tour, one night isn't really that long to test a different amplifier and see how it sounds unless he was very much like, eh, it's, this, it's definitely the other one, but I'm not 100% sure on that now and a part of me is thinking, that if he was road testing 009, he might have played it for at least two to three shows to get a better feel for it. So maybe 006 was having issues and they tried to give it some TLC and love and brought it back and then sure enough, it goes down. Now, why it went down? I mean, obviously we don't know. It's really hard to say. Um, could be something very simple. And I'm sure it was something very, very simple because the next show, it's back and running 
absolutely fine. And for the rest of the tour, the tour being done now at the time of making this video, it had no other 